Okay, wowzers. So if you're like everyone else on the internet, you probably just recently saw the new Spider-Man No Way Home trailer, and while it was awesome, unfortunately it seems like Sony might have messed up on the visual effects, because it would appear as if their visual effects artists forgot to enable the Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire render layers. But it's okay, Sony, I know everyone makes mistakes, and I'm here to help you as your friendly neighborhood visual effects artist. Because as you can see, it currently looks like our poor lizard creature is getting punched by thin air. How'd that get in there? And that is the project we're tackling today. We're gonna fix the new Spider-Man trailer by adding Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield back into it using visual effects and Blender. Now we only have like a few days to get this visual effects finished and sent back before the release of the movie next month, or I'm definitely most probably going to lose my imaginary job of working as a visual effects artist for Sony. If you want the shots, I'll take the staff job. Double the money. I'm happy to say that I partnered with Dell and their precision line of laptops. Now, I call this a laptop, but it's really a mobile workstation because it has the power of a high-end desktop computer with the portability of a laptop. The Dell precision line of laptops can actually be customized to fit your workflow. For example, we have one that's just max specs here with 128 gigabytes of RAM, a beautiful 4K 17-inch display that's actually 120 hertz, and it's powered by an NVIDIA RTX A5000 GPU mobile chip that packs 16 gigabytes of VRAM, along with an Intel Xeon CPU that turbos all the way up to 5 gigahertz. So basically insano specs for a laptop. So this is what I'm going to be using guys for the visual effects today as I fix some of the mistakes that Sony made in Spider-Man No Way Home. If you're interested in the Dell Precision line of laptops, check out the link in the video description where you can get your own portable workstation customized to your needs. And with that said, we kind of need to get web slinging. Now for starters, I needed some Spider-Man models. Now typically, as you guys know, I would create everything from scratch, but something like Spider-Man has been modeled hundreds if not thousands of times already in the past. So it seemed kind of foolish to create my own model from scratch. So I managed to find online the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man model here. This is actually a skin from the PS4 game that I imported into Blender and doing a bit of material tweaks to optimize the materials for cycles. I got it rendering really cool and got it looking really close to the suit from the Tobey Maguire movies. Now next up, I needed an Andrew Garfield model and this one was a little bit harder to come by, but I did eventually find a model on TurboSquid that I bought for 15 bucks. And again, I had to do some modifications to the suit to give the right colors and materials while rendering in blender cycles but again after some tweaks, I got something that was looking really cool for the Andrew Garfield model. Now it was important that we got the scale right and actually that reminds me. That's better. So when you're adding visual effects to something that's already been shot like this, there's a few things that you're gonna have to make sure you match. First of all, we wanna match a few things like the FPS and focal length. Now this shot is probably slowed down to at least half speed, if not quarter speed. Double time. That's actually gonna make the visual effects a little bit easier. It kind of helps hide and mask maybe some of the mistakes to the animating. And then there's a few things I'm gonna have to do to color match and camera match the scene. As you can see, there's a bit of camera movement happening here, but not really enough that I could automatically camera track it. So what I did is I just dropped a few base objects into the scene, did my best to line it up on frame one, and then just scrub through my timeline and add in another keyframe, matching up that of these basic cubes with some of the scaffolding in the background of this shot. As you can see, that got me the basic camera motion, awesome. But now we have to start matching things for for the rendering. So for this I used one of my favorite nighttime HDRs from HDR Haven and just turned it down to a low strength. So there's some ambient city lights casting a little bit of light on our model to match the nighttime scene we have here. And then as you can see, Electro is really responsible for a lot of the light in this scene as he's basically a light bulb about to go out flickering all kinds of light. So for this I added a large point light in the same area here as Electro. And then I manually added keyframes throughout the timeline, increasing the value of that light every time Electro started short circuiting here. And keyframe animating this is really going to help blend the 3D models into the scene. As you can see, you can kind of use Tom Holland's Spider-Man here, making sure it matches the light fall off in intensity every time the lightning kind of sends off one of those bright shockwave things. Next, you can kind of tell if there's a bit of a blue edge light to the scene, maybe being cast by the moon or something else that we don't really know what's going on in the scene here. But for that, I just added in a sunlight at a lower value of about two with a color of a blue, adding a little bit of that edge lighting to the Spider-Man characters. And for the most part, that was matching the lighting pretty closely, but there was one last step that was really gonna help pull it into the scene. And that was actually adding in the movie clip to the background of our video. For this, I just imported it as a plane into Blender, added a bit of a curve to it, so we had the video footage 
fluids kind of wrapping around our 3D model. And then I just gave it a fairly large emission value. So it's casting light from that video footage. Using the actual video clip, it obviously will dynamically change and help match some of that lighting, blending our character into the scene. Because I don't want it visible in the background though, I can turn the view off for the camera. So it's casting the light, but not actually visible in the scene. And do you notice how all these material adjustments are happening in real time? Cycles being a ray tracing renderer is accelerated by that RTX 5000 mobile GPU in the Precision laptop. And this allows for real time interactive rendering as I'm making adjustments on my materials. So we have the camera motion and lighting. Now it's just time to do the hard part, which is the animating. Now for this, I'm really only working with one to two seconds of real time footage and is approximately 72 frames of animation, if you were wondering. So what I started off doing is a little bit of research on my Spidey models to make sure it kind of matched the right sort of swing motions that the different characters had. Something that I learned is that Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man typically uses his web slinging to kind of pull himself forward. As you'll notice in a lot of the swinging sequences, he's often using his webs as sort of like a yank to pull himself faster and forward more. Whereas Tobey Maguire seems to let himself swing a little bit more and then just kind of strike some cool poses after the swing. This was just a few things to keep in mind as I went to animating the Spider-Men at this point. So for the first process in animating is creating a few key poses. Like I said, we have about 72 frames to work with here, and this was gonna be about three poses. And as you can see, using Blender 3.0, rendering on the RTX A5000 mobile chip, it's just crazy to me that in this modern day and age, I can have real-time rendering in Blender cycles on a laptop. This is something else. And being able to see these poses from every different angle in real time made it really easy to make sure that I was getting proportions right and keeping things look mostly lifelike in the process. And it would take me a little while to get some of these poses looking natural, but once it did, it was looking super dope. Another stage was to figure out how far my characters should travel within this second or two of real time footage. As you can see, this is about how far Tom Holland's Spider-Man travels over the course of this clip. And so I kind of wanted to match that with all of these Spider-Man, give or take a little bit, depending on how fast momentum is moving them. So after going through and giving some of our Spider-Men some of their classic poses, I decided I'd have Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man be the one to come swinging in and give the lizard the uh, uppercut to the jaw because he does have maybe some more bad blood with the lizard. Uh, than even Electro. And then when I went ahead and did the same thing for Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man there, giving him one of those classic poses, swinging in on the Electro there up at top. So after another day of animating and fine tweaking things until I couldn't do it anymore, even though it wasn't looking quite perfect. At this step in the process, it was important to make sure I had my motion blur set right to match that of the shutter speed of the film. Once that was done, it was a short matter of compositing it into the scene, adding a slight bit of glow to my characters, again, to match the glow off the objects and characters in the scene. But with that last step, checked off of our list, it was time to render the animation and see what we had created. Tally ho. have it after a day or two of work we had a shot featuring all of our favorite spider-man and it was looking pretty cool but that's just my opinion and i'm curious to know what you guys think so let me know with a comment on the video and let me know if you enjoy these sort of workflow videos and how i do things like this by fixing visual effects in hollywood movies using just free software with blender thanks to dell for sponsoring this video and providing me with the dell precision laptop to use as my main laptop workhorse and being able to have my workstation away from home is something that i never really thought would be possible well that is until now but that wraps it up for me. Whew, a bullet dodged. I'll send that over to Sony and I'm sure they'll be more than thrilled that I was able to fix their visual effects for them. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, guys, let me know with a like on the video. Subscribe if you want more, and I'll see you all in the future. Bye-bye.